Wendy Williams warned us about Jay-Z and Diddy. Interview goes viral. Uh, again, she's another one who's been talking for a while. Uh, as these videos are start, starting to res resurface, everybody, you see comments saying people owe her an apology as well. Um, I mean, hey, it is what it is, man. And, and I just feel like, you know, a lot of times they try to silence you, make you look crazy, diminish your character. I said that before. So here we are. We ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. We come from a very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, it's all coming full circle now, so. Well, if there's one thing Wendy watches are missing, it has got to be Wendy Williams' perspective on everything that has happened to Diddy. Right now, she'd be in her chair going something like, clap if you are shocked. But didn't she try to warn us though about people like Diddy and Jay-Z? It's quite honestly, I think that this is the kind of couple that will stay together because it's good for business and because they don't want to disappoint us. That's that's facts right there. I wish they would uh, put like the year she said this so you guys can see how long she's been talking about this stuff. I've always got a weird vibe from Jay-Z and Beyonce though. Always. Always. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Reportedly are trying to figure out a way to split without divorcing. In other words, a hood divorce. <laughs> Beyonce's true age, check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is her true age? Miss Wendy Williams may be owed a big apology because she got the most backlash for talking about this. And we are going to be breaking down everything she said. What's the tea? Mm. Well, spill it. <laughs> Here I go. For starters, back when Charlemagne the God was Wendy's radio co-host in 2009, Wendy invited former bad boy rapper Mark Curry on her show to talk about his book, Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burned the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. The devil in this case was obviously Diddy. And during the interview, Mark said, this is a man that has a shadow of things that follow him and it will rain on you too. So it's really all about the dark cloud. He also said a few more things referencing Diddy and one thing was clear throughout. Wendy agreed with everything he said. The other thing is that Wendy did have a lot to say about the relationship between Diddy and Cassie, mostly because she felt like there was a balance of power issue between Diddy and Cassie that was always in Diddy's favor and never in Cassie's. Look at her face, you know, man. my thing about when you date a mogul is that it's really difficult to avoid them because if you use your head, you never know when they're going to pop up on the scene. Mm. Like he's mogul, like he can hire a plane right now, zoom it to South Africa. <laughs> land on the on the roof of the hotel where she's staying okay pay people off at the front desk give me the key and let me up in her room like i'd be i'm already paranoid as a person but to know that somebody could actually swoop down on me in the middle of nothing would scare the bejesus out of me now isn't this something that came up very strongly in the lawsuit that cassie you know it's crazy too like she's saying that stuff and you kind of hear like the audience laughing. You know, I know I know she's not saying it as a joke. She's really talking about like, this is the capabilities, what, what they can actually do. But people kind of like, their, nat their natural reaction, the first reaction is to kind of laugh about it. And then you kind of sit there and you're like, well, damn, she ain't lying. You know, I think that's a lot of, 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 the fear factor there. Filed against Diddy. In the lawsuit, Cassie described in detail how Diddy was prone to uncontrollable rage and he subjected her to savage acts in which he punched and stopped her, how she was admitted on several occasions, how she lost her memory because of how much Diddy used to lay hands on her, how she wanted to unalive herself, and how Diddy was forcing her to hook up with a succession of male hookers while he filmed the encounters. Near the end of the relationship in 2018, Cassie also accused Diddy of forcing his way into her home and forcing himself on her. Based on what Cassie said, Diddy brought her into his extravagant, fast-paced, and 
fueled lifestyle not long after she met him and signed to his label when she was 19 and he was pushing 40. So the power dynamic that Wendy was talking about was definitely there. Moving on. For those who recall, Diddy also tried to get even with Wendy and had her blackballed because of what she was exposing about him being on the DL. I mean, in her 2004 book, The Wendy Williams Experience, Wendy herself wrote that she had a certain level of contempt for Puff because he single-handedly tried to ruin her career. Wendy also claimed in 2005, during her radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, that she was almost jumped by the girl group Total, who was signed to Diddy's record label Bad what? Boy Records. And she recalled the alleged moment and hinted that Diddy was involved during a 2019 episode of her talk show. I'm Total. rapping in my headphones and I'm going downstairs. My new boyfriend at the time, the bad Kevin, he was picking me up. <laughs> but no, this is when he was the good Kevin, right? So, so I'm walking in the elevator with my intern at the time, Skeletor. And, and, but look, I'm like, why is everybody looking down at the sidewalk? I mean, noses were pressed to the glass. And I get downstairs and find this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab. No to come after me, to kick me. And I'm like, for what? You know what I said was true. You all are broken. You were living in the projects. And that was that. But, but the, the point I'm making is, you know, Amanda, you shouldn't have, go I didn't get back on the radio and talk about it. What I did was desire to do better so I can have a purple chair and talk about it right now and then have the whole scene play out. As a matter of fact, Wendy also suggested that Diddy was behind her firing from radio during a 2013 interview with Vlad TV when she talked about how her firing revolved around her speculation about a certain hip-hop musician. We come from a very homosexual era of hip-hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for... Um, talking about such and now it's all come full circle there were many situations none of which to talk about but there were many situations um, back in the day in in my career and um, it's all coming full circle now so well for someone who tried to ruin Wendy's career for all the things she exposed hot topics would have broken the internet these last couple yeah. of weeks and just like Wendy had been saying over the years Diddy was guilty of a couple of things and he was arrested in Manhattan roughly six months after federal authorities raided his luxurious homes in Los Angeles and Miami. So I know she's not uh, in the best health right now. And, you know, she's don't do the show. But has there been any videos of her, like, on social media talking about this, like, I told you so type videos? Because, again, if you, if you are really listening to this video and the stuff she's saying... Yeah. Prosecutors actually said in court papers that they had interviewed more than 50 people and witnesses, and they expect that number to grow. In the grand jury indictment, federal agents reported finding not only 1,000 bottles of baby oil, but also three AR-15s at Diddy's residences in Miami and Los Angeles. No one, Wendy, I'm sure she would have had a field day with those 1,000 bottles of baby oil. Anyway, these items were reportedly part of a larger operation involving Diddy's freak-offs, where he allegedly hosted wild, fueled parties. The indictment actually details the use of these supplies in extravagant gatherings, including controlled substances, extra linens, and lighting. It also goes on to detail how Diddy threatened and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. He's also accused of using his staff, money, and influence to build his business empire, and ultimately a criminal enterprise where he took part in a bunch of crimes not limited to forced labor, Trapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The indictment also details numerous occasions from at least in or about 2009 and continuing for years where Diddy mistreated women by, among other things, sh**ing, dragging, throwing objects at, sh**ing them. In addition, the indictment went on to say that Diddy lured women in under the pretense of a relationship and forced them to engage in freak-offs using physical and other forms of force. The freak-offs are also described as elaborate and produced intimate performances that Diddy allegedly arranged, directed, 
activated during and often electronically recorded. Then it notes how Diddy's staff often booked hotel rooms and stocked them in advance with baby oil, lubricant, sheets, and extra lighting. Apparently, the freak-offs could last for days, and Diddy, together with the other people involved, would often receive IV fluids to recover from whatever they were using. Again, didn't Wendy blow the whistle on these parties, saying that the things that took place there were questionable? Honey, the same Wendy Williams also talked about the 1999 incident that involved Jennifer Lopez, and thought that one, Diddy was a douchebag for how he handled the situation, and two, she said she thought something was fishy going on. Guys, didn't we get receipts confirming that she Shine was set up to take that fall. And Puffy. You had me speeding through numerous traffic lights, doing a in a nightclub. You remember, you had me do the perp walk and spend a few hours in jail. Die! Also, have y'all ever seen the interview Wendy Williams did with Kareen Superhead Steffens after she released her book? Kareen was basically one of the first people to expose Diddy when she talked about how Irv Gotti pretty much passed her off to Diddy because he was asking about her when they went to his party. She said in her book that there was a lot of use at the party and that she and Diddy ended up hooking up. But Diddy also wanted a man involved, if you know what I mean. Corinne then said that months later, she ended up hanging out with Exhibit and she runs into a Diddy party again and they notice a lot of gay activities at the party. According to her, Diddy was on drugs and paranoid that she was going to expose their sessions. Best believe that when Superhead did her interview with Wendy, Miss Wendy was asking all the right questions. Right now, I know y'all can hear Wendy saying, clap if you think Diddy is guilty. Now, when it comes to Jay-Z, Wendy was also pretty vocal about him supposedly hooking up with younger women like Foxy Brown, for instance. Foxy and Jay-Z collaborated on numerous occasions throughout the 90s, and Jay actually wrote several songs on Foxy's debut album. And the things that Jay-Z had Foxy sing in were just insane. Tell me why this grown man had a 15 year old recording to a song with a hook like ain't no end like the one i got no one can f you better sleeps around but he gives me a lot keeps you in diamonds and leathers friends tell me i should leave you alone tell the freaks to find a man of their own jay-z also literally wrote that he was running after foxy brown in her song il nana he did not rap in the song but he is the one who wrote that part of the song first the mansion then the yacht sound proper straight cash got bloodhounds trying to hunt down the brown fox well the rumor is that jay-z was 27 hooking up with foxy at 15 and this is something that wendy openly spoke about. When Foxy and Jay-Z had, um... I'll be. Yeah, I'll be. that was a good one. Okay, Foxy was the star of that. Jay-Z was standing in the corner, wringing his hands, talking about, okay, all right, what do I do next? And then, you know, this was allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know, we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. <laughs> Allegedly. Other than that, Where there were parents. also reports saying that Jay was also funding Foxy's shopping trips and paying for her hair and nail salon visits while she was still in high school. In fact, people who went to school with Foxy say that Jay-Z used to pick her up when she went to school, and according to them, Biggie Smalls used to pick her up too, but they were legit friends. But everybody knew that her and Jay were together. So there's also this wild rumor that there's even tape out there of Jay and Foxy getting down and dirty with Jamie Foxx. And Jay-Z made Foxy sign multiple gag orders after she, Jamie, and Jay engaged in a threesome. Coincidentally, not long after the incident, the tape was ironically stolen from her home. And other than the allegation that they engaged in a threesome, there were also rumors that Jay-Z even gave Foxy an STD, allegedly. Wendy knew, Boy. guys, she knew. And it wasn't just Foxy Brown, by the way, cause the streets have been saying that some of the things Diddy is being accused of, Jay-Z has also participated in. Saw Jay-Z. Yeah. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both, Leah. They shared so much in common. Yep, that's Jaguar Wright, who, by the way, has also been doing a lot of whistleblowing, and y'all have been calling her crazy. Anyway, when it comes to Jay-Z, remember Nas also suggested that Jay-Z knew what R. Kelly was doing with some young women, especially Aaliyah, and he told Wendy Williams during a radio interview when a tape of R. Kelly leaked, I could have showed the R. Kelly video that everybody's talking about and made fun of it and show pictures of Jay hanging out. You can't tell me that Jay didn't see a 14-year-old girl come into the studio and sit on R. Kelly's lap. You're gonna tell me he didn't see no 14-year-old Year old girl come into the vicinity? So if the feds are trying to get Diddy for illegally transporting young women across borders for you know what, maybe they should also be looking at Jay-Z because the way he's being mentioned together with Diddy and R. Kelly is a little sus. Plus, even when we talk about Jay-Z's wife, Beyonce, things just don't add up. You see, Jay-Z and Beyonce try to convince the public that they started dating when Beyonce was 19. But people from back in the day say that they were together when Beyonce was much younger. Somehow, Jay-Z managed to make sure that Beyonce stayed with him and even got married to him. But have y'all ever heard the details about how he has been 
and controlling Beyonce for years? Allegedly. Baby, what Wendy Williams was trying to tell us was that all these people, Diddy, Jay-Z, R. Kelly, they are all the same. And just like she said, everything is coming full circle. R. Kelly and Diddy are already facing the consequences of their actions, and I can bet that it's only a matter of time for Jay-Z. And the skeletons will definitely come out. But what do you think, guys? Does Wendy deserve an apology for all the backlash she got for being a whistleblower? While at it, let me know how you think she would have reacted to Diddy's arrest in the comments section below. Again, man, the, the number one thing, like, again, you look at, you look at Cat Williams, you know, they try to make you look crazy. And that's the first thing people say. Oh, she crazy. Hell no. Nah. Y'all believe her? She crazy. This and this. And this stuff come out and they're like, yeah, man. Um, Like when you got money like that and you're able to give people hush money, like money they thought they would never see in their whole lifetime. You know, and especially when they come from nothing. Oh, they ain't going to say nothing. They ain't going to say nothing at all. You know, um, I'm just trying to watch these videos as they come out, man, because I feel like the more you know, um, like a, a lot of these people, I feel like had the chance to distance themselves from certain people, but they chose to stay around them. You know, I'm pretty sure they caught wind of what was going on, but they continued to go to these parties and these just whatever it was, bump the music, play all, you know, a lot of these people, we're on the outside looking in, you know, but the people who are, the, are on the inside, they've known this stuff been going on, you know, and they continue to to hang out and support these people, they're part of the problem too. So my whole thing is like, um, that's why you see a lot of them talking about, I left the parties before stuff got crazy. And it's like, well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> hey, appreciate y'all coming over. Shout out to Wendy Williams again. You know, I, I always talk about the delivery. People don't like the delivery, you know, because she'd be so excited to spill what she knows that people be like, oh, no, she's just like drama. Hey, two things can be true. All right. Peace out.